So this is a quick tutorial video on trends, uh, periodicity, as it applies to our AP exam. So there's a few factors we need to talk about that influence the trends and that on the free response you would need to be able to speak to. Uh, the first is of course the energy level and it's a pretty basic one that the closer it is to the nucleus, uh, the electron because this is all about the number of electrons and number of protons. So the electron, the number of shells, the number of energy levels, the further away it is is going to affect, the closer it is to the nucleus is going to affect. Also the number of protons it has, which is the charge of the nucleus. And lastly, uh, the shielding effect. So the more levels, there's greater shielding between the uh, electron shells. We'll talk more about that. All right. So let's talk first about atomic radius. Um, as you can see here, that we have sodium uh, going all the way down to argon. They're in the same energy level. So the electrons keep getting added to the same shell, but there are greater number of protons on this side. So with all these protons, you're getting a lot of the nuclear charge. So the atomic radius is, oops, sorry. With all these charges, the atomic radius is going to be a lot smaller because it's going to pull those electrons in, whereas with only one proton, let's say, and he's got one electron, it's not going to have the kind of pull on it. Now, there's more than one proton, but just as relative, we say, for, for its adding to that energy shell. All right. Next, we'll talk about ionization energy. And it's the amount of energy required to completely remove a mole of electrons from a mole of gaseous atoms. Okay, this is different than general chem. Something to remember. And you get the first ionization energy first ionization energy with that first mole. Each mole that's removed, you get the second ionization energy, third ionization energy, it gets more and more difficult and the amount of energy it takes to remove it is greater and greater. As you can see here, let's just say we pick nitrogen, 1,402 kilojoules per mole to remove the first mole of electrons, 2,857 to remove the second, and 4,577 to remove the third. So you can see it can, re it can require quite a bit. I also want you to notice that, you know, this is an increase of maybe double, this is an increase of maybe double. You know, there's, there's not these really large increases, but every time we do a jump between an ionization energy of the atomic electron and the noble gas configuration, we're gonna have a huge jump. Here is a big jump. This electron coming off of lithium gives it a noble gas configuration. So this is a 10, almost a, like a, I don't know, 11 fold jump, 12 fold jump, okay? This is a huge jump right here, all right? So the same thing's gonna happen here between beryllium and uh, between its second and third. Again, you're looking at about a 10 fold jump between 1,700 to 14,000. We would see the same thing again if we were going from boron to its fourth. We would see a huge jump, okay? Something to remember that will be on the test. We'll have a list of ionization energies. What determines this ionization energy? The nuclear charge, the number of protons are in the center, how tightly it's holding on to those electrons, the distance it is, those outermost electrons from the nucleus, and if there are filled or half-filled orbitals. And as I mentioned before, you're going to get some lower energy, greater stability with your half-filled or orbitals. Okay. The last one, of course, is the shielding effect that as you start getting energy levels out, the electrons are going to start repelling each other a little bit. And so you're going to get some shielding. Lower energy levels are going to shield from higher energy levels. Here's an example of shielding. Oops that an outer electron out here experiences greater shielding from one, two, three energy levels below it, then let's say an electron right here would only get shielded by one, so it would not have as much shielding. Um, as we went through this, I went through something like this uh, in class. Hydrogen's pretty high because it takes a lot of energy to remove its electron. It only has one electron. The second electron being added, there's also a second proton, higher nuclear charge for, for helium. So uh, what I'm going to do is gonna, just going to write nuclear charge. I'm going to just write some of the differences of, of why this is happening. Lithium, it's got shielding. That's what's making it so low. Okay. Then beryllium, nuclear charge. Boron drops down because, again, 
S shields a little bit on P. Now they also talk about S having greater penetration power. Um, the S orbitals can penetrate closer to the nucleus. Therefore, um, if you're something like, like the, the beryllium right here, it's filling that S orbital, it's going to have greater penetration. Therefore, it's higher first in ionization energy. We get to nitrogen, it has a high nuclear charge, then oxygen. Now you're going to get some repulsion, right? Okay, so this is a half-filled orbital right here have filled on this nitrogen right here and now you got repulsion as the second electron into an orbital and so now it's going to be easier to remove that outermost electron finally get up to neon again now neon is not as high as you can see that neon is not as high as helium because it is experiencing some shielding from the first ion, from the first electron level. We go all down to sodium, and wow, a lot more shielding, a lot more shielding. Okay, shielding, but high nuclear charge. Okay, all right. So uh, the full energy levels would be sort of like the noble gas configuration. All right, uh, the the. As we all know, the atoms really want to have the noble gas configuration because it's the most stable. Um, something we haven't talked about is electron affinity, which is the energy change associated with adding an electron. So adding a mole of electrons to a mole of gaseous atoms. And really those, those groups, those um, elements in group 7A, like the halogens, fluorine, are going to have the greatest energy change associated with this. Um, it's going to increase left to right because like sodium doesn't want it. So um, it's going to take the energy changes. It's not going to be as great. It's kind of like electron affinity is kind of like it sucks it on. There's a huge energy change. It's also going to decrease moving down the table. Transionic size. This is important. Now you guys are all familiar with the idea that cations are smaller uh, than than the atom they come from. The perfect example is if I had lithium and I have my electrons here, here's my two electrons and here's my, oops, here's my, here's my outer, there's only one right here. If I lose that one, then I'm just down to just two electrons right there. And that's pretty obvious that this is small and this when you lost that electron, okay? Um, here we're comparing electrons that are in the same row, I mean, sorry, not a lot, the atoms, they're ions in the same row. As it gains more electrons, the anions get bigger. So that anions get bigger if they have, um, as they get electrons because of the protons, they don't have enough protons, so the electrons repel, get bigger. Because of electron repulsion. Okay, cations get smaller. You could say that there is an increased nuclear charge. All right. Now, something else that's kind of interesting is when we talk about isoelectronic ions. Now, they all have the same electronic structure, but they... Um, while they all have the same electronic structure, they don't have the same number of protons and that will change it, okay? So the largest of those, again, would be very similar to what we had just talked about, are the anions, okay? So same electron configuration, but let's take a look at them. The anion is the biggest, okay? It has the greatest charge, same, same structure. It has the fewest, fewest protons, okay? And this has the most protons, aluminum here on the end, most protons with the same number of electrons, okay? So um, this, is a, this would be a question on the test, probably multiple choice. Put these in the order of least to greatest uh, ionic radius, and it would give you the list of isoelectronic species.
All right. Oh, I didn't realize I duplicated that. Just quickly, this everyone should be pretty familiar with electronegativity, the ability to attract an electron. Uh, if you were to compare it to electron affinity, atoms with the largest negative electron affinity have the largest electronegativity, which makes the most sense. Okay. Um, if we looked at the periodic table real quick, the ionization energy, electronegativity, and electron affinity, they increase moving left to right, and they decrease moving top, top to bottom. Okay. And then um, atomic size increases, or I what I should say is the way that we say it in, in Gen Chem, from left to right, it decreases and it increases moving top to bottom. Pretty straightforward.